Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with a really awesome unboxing video for you on the latest custom knife in my collection. I'm going to be talking about this Robert Carter F16 right here. And what I wanted to show you right off the bat is my collection of Robert Carter knives. There is a reason that I've enjoyed collecting his knives ever since I got my hands on the BBM and the original Talon. I have been in love with these designs. Now, the BBM and the Talon and then the Custom Tech and then later on, I haven't even done a video on this one yet, the MK1RC came along. None of these are purely Robert Carter's knives. That is to say, this one and this one were uh, built with uh, Nick Chuprin. This one was built with Frank Fisher. This one, even though it's totally built by Rob Carter, actually the, the handles are water jetted at another facility. This F-16 represents the first knife in my collection that is actually a fully handmade knife from Robert Carter himself. And so that's very exciting for me. And I really wanted to get into the details. I definitely wanted to pay homage to the rest of the amazing knives that I have from Rob Carter. The Talon V2 right here, the collaborative effort with Frank Fisher, one of the greatest knives in my collection and one that I will never part with. Uh, definitely the BBM, which I don't give enough attention to. Had this one for well over a year now. And uh, one of my favorite knives of all time. Certainly never going to get rid of this knife. And I really hope that he makes some more of those down the line. The Custom Tech, absolutely beautiful. I accidentally dropped this knife recently, so I don't want to show the details of that on the camera too much. And the MK1RC. I will say that this one maybe has the most similar overall blade profile in keeping that very characteristic divot in the, in the uh, blade right there. The thumb rest area right there. So let's get the rest of these off the screen. We've done enough appreciation of the rest of the knives uh, in that collection, but I wanted to put the spotlight on this new F-16. So Rob's sort of base model, Rob's sort of standard model is the F-16. I want to say that's the one he's probably best known for. It generally has a tanto blade shape and this very sort of blocky type handle with the two angles on the end right here. I recommend if you haven't done this yet to go back and watch my video that I made very recently on the Robert Carter Knives lineup provided by a couple of my good friends. Uh, my good friends Russell, Greg and Jesse sent their knives along so that I could review them and I, I'm still indebted to them. And I wanted to be part of the boys club and so I was able to get this. I actually traded that Jonas Iglesias Volt uh, as a partial trade for this. They I uh, got that this knife plus some cash for that knife. So I think that was a pretty solid trade because I've been chasing one of these custom carters for quite some time. So before we get into the details of the knife. Let me go ahead and let me show you some specs on this knife. Unlike the F-16s that I had in my original video a few weeks ago, this is actually a bit smaller. This has about a 3.3 inch blade as opposed to the full size 3.5. And that was actually a very pleasant surprise for me because it makes it small enough to actually carry a bit more easily. Those 3.5 models are just a bit bigger and this is a pretty chunky knife and we'll get into those numbers too it makes this a bit more approachable as an actual carry knife. Back to the pivot, you're looking at about 3.8 inches. Overall, you're looking at seven and three quarters inches. The handle length is coming in right at about 4.3 inches with an effective grip area of 3.85 inches, give or take. Coming along right here, let me go ahead and tear this. The uh, handle is very thick right here with these fully contoured scales and thick slabs of titanium coming in at 0.64 inches, uh, over half an inch, and the blade stock is coming in at 173 thousandths. So a very robust but small knife right here, and it is in keeping with Rob Carter's sort of philosophy. He really likes to make a strong, well-made knife, and this comes from a lineage of knife making. I've said this before in my previous videos, and I'm going to reiterate this point, Robert Carter is an amazing maker, not just from his, his own sort of, you know, he wasn't born this way. He was born into a family of knife makers. His grandfather is Mel Pardue. Yes, Mel Pardue, the designer of the Benchmade Griptilian. 
And his father is Joe Pardue, who also made custom knives and lots of different designs that were also picked up by production companies. Rob was making knives from the age of that the, he could freaking walk. He was making knives. He made his first full knife, I think, by the time he was seven. And here he is. He's a young man, still up and coming in the game and doing amazing, amazing things. Uh, but to have that heritage and to have that background and the knowledge of the generations before handed down to you, it just is setting him up for absolute success. And that skill level shows through in this knife. I'm going to bring out another couple of knives for a quick size comparison. This seems a bit silly to bring out a Spyderco Paramilitary 2 for a size comparison to a full custom knife, but you can see that it's a bit smaller than that. Here's the Koenig knives. Arius, both of these knives, significantly, significantly bigger than this 3.3 inch blade. Here's the Mini Goblin. So you can see this is actually a rather compact package. It makes for a very nice carry. Uh, given its overall thickness. Here's the Spyderco Capara, and uh, you saw the knives earlier. I'll go ahead and bring out this knife again. This is the uh, MK1RC. If you have an NCC MK1, you might be familiar with the sizes there. So it's a nice, nice size. I was pleasantly surprised by that. Uh, one of the specs that's a little bit uh, difficult to deal with is the weight. This one has a ton of zirconium on it, and so coming in at 7 ounces on the nose, so quite a heavy little clunker right here. But I am willing to forgive it that for all of the rest of its amazing qualities. Let's go ahead and break this knife down anatomically so we can see what those qualities are. Up front is this crazy blade of CPM 20 CV steel. Uh, I bought this without knowing what the steel was because honestly, once you get to a certain point in knives, let's be honest, the steel doesn't really matter that much. When a custom knife maker, especially one at Rob's level, who's going to heat treat the steel himself and he knows the intricacies of making a fine knife, it doesn't matter to me if this is CPM 154, CPM 20 CV, uh, you know, it, there's not really going to be a huge difference. S35VN, the, the differences will be very mild and almost unnoticeable. But to know that this one comes with 20 CV is just an extra bit of icing on the cake. To know that it is indeed one of the very highest quality stainless steels available on the market today. Chemically equivalent to M390. And I definitely know that coming out of Rob's shop, he is going to be treating it right. So it has this very, very characteristic Rob Carter American Tanto grind. It's my understanding that among these smaller F-16 models, there are only two or three of them that exist with this type of blade grind. A lot more of them have the Spanto style grind, but I know that Rob really likes this grind and it's very difficult to achieve. I am not a knife maker. I do not know how to grind knives, but I do understand that that grind right there, the transition at the Tanto right there is something very challenging. In fact, when they were trying to reproduce this grind for the MK1 RC collaboration, they found that the steel wouldn't really handle it quite as well, this Nitro V steel. Now, Rob can correct me if I was wrong. They, they, quote, they said, quote, technical difficulties meant that they had to slightly change the grind because it can't always be done that easily. And so I know that this is quite challenging. Here you're gonna see there is a hollow grind for the primary bevel. It is flat ground out at the tip. It is a flat ground swedge right there. It's got the very characteristic thumb stop right there. This is something that's a bit of a point of contention for some people. When I showed this knife to Nick Shabazz, he says, oh good, he started with a spidey hole and then he made the rest of the blade. I realize that this is something that you're either going to love or you're not going to love. I happen to love it because like I showed you, it carries through with the rest of these knives in the lineup. That characteristic hump is something that Rob Carter does and he does it well and it just keeps that lineage going and I appreciate seeing that. Uh, I, I have seen other F-16 models that don't have that. This just screams to me Rob Carter without a logo on it at all. And in fact, another thing to mention about the blade and the rest of the knife 
there is no labeling, there are no logos, and it is totally clean, and I love that. It is just, it just speaks for itself. You know this is a Rob Carter just by looking at it, just by seeing that blade. Now, not only is that blade beautifully ground, but it is also done in a perfect hand-rubbed satin finish. Trying to capture that in the light here, see how the light dances on it. The top is also nicely polished. All of the horizontal satin lines are uniform and beautiful. If you watched Terra Fanatic's recent video on the MK1RC collab, you'll see Rob doing a hand rub satin by hand, hence the name hand rub satin. In any case, uh, he's doing it slowly, methodically, carefully. So it's amazing to see the time and energy that it takes to make a whole blade look like this. And I, it's, it's a very beautiful thing. Moving back to the pivot, this guy is running on some ball bearings, uh, cage ball bearings. And I have to say, this has one of the most masculine detents I've ever seen in my life. And I mean that because it's quite stiff and I love it. I really like a strong detent. It's not overly stiff. You're going to be able to deploy this knife, but you certainly have to give it a masculine push. And when you do this thing, as you can see, fires like a bolt. It is so fast, and it is so smooth, and it is so <laughs> manly in the way that it opens. I can't really explain it better than that. It locks up like a tank, and it feels incredible. Now, the flipper tab is a bit sharp. It's one of those upswept thingies right here, and it has been rounded off. That is just his style. It does allow for a very rapid deployment and a very reproducible deployment. Uh, this is going to not be the most comfortable thing to play with for the entire day, but it's not about to stop me from flipping this 80,000 times in a day. Uh, the detent, as I mentioned, is very crisp and very strong. If I can get the light in there correctly, you may be able to even see that the detent ball has been flattened somewhat. That is something that Rob does on a few of his knives. I certainly know that it was present on both the BBM and the Talon, if I'm not mistaken. Let me actually take a look here. Yes, the Talon has also been flattened uh, on the detent ball. So that is, uh, that is something that Rob has been doing for quite some time. Very cool to see that also on this knife. This one features his pivot hardware. This is uh, actually very similar to the hardware you see on the Custom Tech. As a matter of fact, it may be the exact same pivot and pivot stuff that you see on the Custom Tech. Sorry for all the marks on this guy. Uh, but on this one, it features zirconium pivot collars that are done in a polished finish. And the pivot itself has been polished. Usually Rob, as I showed you on the Custom Tech, sends his knives with the screw side on the presentation side, this one came in this orientation. I'm not sure if the owner did it. Sometimes Rob ships them like this. It is totally arbitrary. Uh, I like it like this. This is my preferred uh, configuration. Uh, very smooth pivot, very, very fast action. It, it just, it falls shut and it feels a bit like a bank vault door closing. Just very, very smooth. Uh, you know, no friction, just this extremely smooth, like two pieces of oiled glass slipping past each other. It's just very nice in the way that it comes down. One of my favorite things about this knife is when it closes, it makes a special ting. I don't know if you can hear it or if it will come across in the video. It has this high pitched ting sound that uh, absolutely just it's like an asmr video it just sends chills up the spine because it's such a satisfying sound on closure it's just very very nice so let's go ahead and move back to the handles here this is running on some titanium frames that you can see have been bronze anodized and eggshelled orange peeled i'm not exactly sure what to call that i would say that's an orange peel type finish very nice user finish and then bronze colored uh, it features zirconium bolsters that look like they're done in a wire wheel type finish. Again, maybe an orange peel, wire wheel type of user finish, and I really like that. Zirconium, when it's polished, can show fingerprints. And so in this configuration, let me go ahead and wipe this off. I'm going to clean this off and then put my thumb right in the middle of it, and it doesn't really do anything. Uh, it just kind of makes it a little darker. If I do that, you can't tell that I've touched it. So it's not a fingerprint magnet. Polished zirconium is a fingerprint magnet and would absolutely ruin the look of this knife, but it's nice matte finished 
uh, zirconium, and I absolutely love that. You'll also find zirconium on the 3D milled custom clip, as well as the floating backspacer. I really love a floating backspacer, and Rob does some of the best in the business. The It almost looks like it's flush with the knife when you're a little bit farther away. You have to get this close to realize that there is indeed a gap there, and it's not the easiest thing to see, but that's how tight and flat all of these pieces are, and it looks absolutely great. The inside of the frame, I don't know if you've seen it yet, has been jeweled. Just giving that extra touch of refinement, it's beautiful to see that. It means that every single surface of this knife has been touched. It reminds me of Stan Wilson, the legend himself, uh, whom Rob knows quite well. Uh, the scales on this guy are running ivory micarta. Some people have asked if it's Westinghouse. I understand that this is ivory micarta. I actually have some plans coming up uh, where I've talked to Rob about possibly changing these out for something a little bit different, and that will be very exciting to show you guys uh, as we come to it. Again, I did not order this knife. I bought this on the secondary market, and so even though this knife is absolutely spectacular, uh, in its current form, Rob has been very kind to uh, talk to me about maybe making changes if I so need, because uh, I also have to get my custom tech spod. Uh, this will take some months. He's a very busy guy. This is not about to happen in the next few days or weeks. So stay tuned to my channel and you'll definitely see that. What do I think of this knife? Well, the initial impressions are absolute bewilderment with how amazing it really is. Uh, his actions are refined. This seems like it's a brutish type of knife. B-R-U-T-I-S-H. Brutish type of thick, heavy, clunky knife, but he has made this feel unbelievably smooth, very snappy, very fast, very solid, uh, but also very usable. It is a really usable blade shape. This Tanto shape is one that he likes because he likes having two points. A lot like Nick Chupper, and they both really enjoy the Tanto or Spanto style blade shape. This has all the characteristic features of a Rob Carter knife, including the divot on the blade, the pivots right here, the clip, and the overall fit and finish and look. Uh, you'll even see the RJC, Robert James Carter, on the inside there on the zirconium backspacer. Perhaps you'll be able to catch that in some of these angles. But I'm blown away, honestly. This knife is not a perfect everyday carry knife. It's a bit too heavy, it's a bit too thick, the blade stock is very thick. But what this is, is the culmination of a search for a long time for an excellent custom Robert Carter knife. This F16 is everything that I've wanted in one of his knives. It's the right size, it's the right combination of materials, it's the right finishes and I absolutely adore it. I did say that I would be changing some of the materials, but that's only the, only the scales. Everything else will remain the same. I absolutely love it. It's, uh, I, I can't explain to you how happy I am to get this. When I started collecting knives, I had a couple of makers that were my grail makers. You know, Stan Wilson, Frank Fisher, Robert Carter, Peter Rosenti. These guys were my grail makers, and now I'm starting to be able to get their knives. I've got the Rob Carter. I've got the Resenti. I'm going to give you a sneak preview and tell you that I do indeed have a Frank Fisher coming. All that's left is the Wilson, and we're moving on up in the world here, guys. So I appreciate everybody who's been following my journey along. Tell me what you think of the Robert Carter F-16 that I've acquired down in the comments below. Go ahead and click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Head over to Instagram and check me out as Dr. Frunky. And as always, guys, this is Dr. Frunky saying, take care.